To ye who ask of things to come, give thought to what is past and gone. The road stretched on, obscured by an endless veil of snow. Somewhere in the white beyond stood the great iron gates, and on the other side a humble manservant who awaited the coming of three travelers. You were one of the first people we met when we came here. <laughs> Merchants of all nations speak a common tongue, and its words are coin. Needless to say, there is little profit to be had in prejudice, especially against those who have received the patronage of a count. Thus, when the wards of House Fortomp arrived, she was only too happy to make their acquaintance. Ale? Mold wine? Don't tell me. Tea? Memories, then. <laughs> There's a better jot. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> I could tell you the truth, but would that be any fun? Brothers brave and true live well, forgotten and content. He knew everyone's story, though he would never share his own. An optimist, he wanted to believe in the best of in people. Sometimes that faith would be rewarded, other times betrayed, but he would listen regardless, and he would hope. speak freely. <laughs> Sparkly pants. You're welcome for killing your Pope. And the, the thing with the dragons too, that was pretty good I guess. Uh, 
the man Elaine. I say, old girl, you have the most uncanny ability to appear whenever I least expect you. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> He's talking to you, dumbass. God. <sighs> God, Amanda Lane. How many times would a Mandalorian have died if it weren't for Honor Wa? <laughs> I must make sure this big dumbie doesn't kill himself on accident. <laughs> yes. <sighs> Poor Honor Wa. <laughs> For all the ladies' disdain, it was an old, familiar dance. To her, Lord of Mandalayne would always be the boy fumbling for a compliment, and perhaps there was comfort in that, a memory of home on the bleak frontier. Known you were planning to pay us a visit, I would have seen that you had received a proper reception. I don't need a feast, but thank you all the same. You don't don't force your men to dress up for me. Twarel. Mm, no. Just personal. <laughs> it's cool.
<laughs> he is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> An honorable man, mindful of tradition, he was loath to accept the assistance of a foreigner in exile, but when forced to confront bitter truths, he looked within and found himself wanting. Pride be damned, then, if it lead one astray. He would set aside his prejudice, prejudices and join hands with his gifted outcast for the greater good of Ishgard. Jesus. <laughs> two foreign heretics against two knights of the Heaven's Ward. Under the watchful gaze of the Fury, they would fight, and the winner's claims would be proven true. It was the opening gambit of a greater game whose stakes would remain unknown for some time. We did it, Alphano. Not mistaken. You are correct. For change, for truth. To walk the righteous path, to live for the sake of others, to rise to the highest station, yet remain powerless to bring an end to your people's suffering. What price salvation, then? What sacrifice beyond reason? For uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. <laughs> Lieutenant Brittlestar, this is most unexpected. Nah, I just want to say hi. <laughs> Journey of Remembrance. Thank the Navigator. I had resigned myself to another day spent listening to my advisors prattle on about the Beastmen's latest movements. Tell me of your adventures. <sighs> does, does everything have to be ocean related with you, Merlin? What? <laughs> <laughs> so the bloody nose you gave us at the melee showed me that. She had never been one to retreat, much less in the face of transparent theatrics. But this had been no ordinary battlefield, its rules of engagement anything but clear, so she would watch, and she would learn, and in time, she would act. Lollafell's whisking the heck out of that bowl.
Thank you for your assistance, Aguri. Commander Swift. Mm, greetings. Hmm. Thought this is for Thal's balls. <laughs> I did, good friend. <laughs> Maybe not right now, good sir. Fucking Nilbert. What a shit. It's not your fault, Rabon. Refugee of a fallen nation, he had risen from the depths of poverty to claim a seat on the syndicate, yet for all his great deeds, one was left undone, and like sands through an hourglass, the years slipped away, taking with them an old friend's hope. <laughs> By the fury...
perhaps. Forsaken by gods and men, they found salvation in a revelation. They would take up arms against their own kind to set ancient wrongs to right, cut out Ishgard's festering heart, and the war would be over. This they knew, believed with all their being, until their savior told them their efforts would be for naught. Gentilot. Well, if isn't the great warrior of light herself, she who slew Dreadworm Nidhogg, bring an end to thousand years of war and my very livelihood, thank you very much. Oh, boo-hoo. Oh, he's, okay. You got me good. <laughs> yeah, incineration, not so good. As long as there are wars to fight, there will be those who take up arms, not out of hatred or even a sense of duty, but for want of better employment. When presented with an alternative, such individuals may gladly trade their swords for scythes, or, failing that, pledge them to a more worthy cause. Nath given you trouble? Nah. She saw that was when she saw her ace velger. I gotta know. <laughs> He's doing us a goof. Hunter of dragons and gods, I bid you welcome. Still to remember some shit. Bound no longer to the will of the many, they were now free to walk their own path. Thus reborn, they would write the first chapter of a new history to be passed on to future generations. And as their culture grew older and richer, so too would their story. Friend of Yazel, warrior of warriors, thou art ever welcome in Annex Tron. Hmm. 
Hmm. Then speed on. In the chorus, the fallen could rise once more, for none are dead whose names yet echo in the heavens, and the song would not end until the last voice fell silent. Heroes and villains, sinners and saints, all would live again. Yank my palm and call me a mole bat. I will not be doing that. <laughs> Erks, Erks, sighting quests. <laughs> Wait, friends are here? Oh shit! Well, hello, Connie. Can I call you Connie? And Kuplo Cop. Looks like he's threatening her. Too stubborn to die. Jeez. Well, I'm glad we got two people with one visit. <laughs> May you ever walk in the light of the crystal. Even in the farthest reaches of distant, dangerous lands, one may chance upon a friendly face. Though given to mischief and largely unconcerned by the troubles of the outside world, they came to understand Ishgard's plight and agreed to lend their aid. Eventually, that is. The crackling warmth of Alphano's campfire, the savory waft of Azale's bubbling stew, the soft snoring of Morgan asleep on the grass. A cold wind blew that night as well, and on the morrow they mounted the steps and blew the horn, but having climbed to the summit with hope in their hearts, they descended, dejected, weighed down by truths too grim to contemplate. Back to Ulda. You there, over here, quickly. So Papa Sean. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hello, Your Grace.
Can't believe we're sneaking out. We're doing a crime. If you start in Ulda, Papishan asks you to help rescue a young girl or help find her or something, and it turns out to be Nanamo disguised just like this. It's a nice start. <laughs> oh? <laughs> you want to slip me some of that then if some of it's meant for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> what I told you what I hated. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Also, just helping the refugees in general. <laughs> Papa shot searching for her. <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> <This c> <sighs> Forgive him, everyone. It's his first day. What cruel fate to lose her father as a child and be compelled to rule in his stead. And how the years had tempered her dreams and taught her, sometimes brutally, the price of naivety. Though outwardly unscathed by her ordeal, it was a wiser and more wary Nanamo who reclaimed the throne. Alien! Oh yeah, because we, we went looking for her before the banquet, and she had disappeared, and we found the poison bottle, and that had gotten us implicated. She was trying to warn us about it. That fucker.
for the freedom of all. It had begun with an oath and ended with a betrayal, as the conspirators turned on their comrades for coin and country. The good and true were beaten and imprisoned, or else butchered where they stood. But even in their darkest moments, they never stopped believing that the dawn's light would shine again. Why, hello there, Evelyn! Fancy meeting you here! Hello, Goofus and Gallant. Or should I say Goofus and other Goofus? That's okay. <laughs> yeah! Y'all should really get some sleep. <laughs> Heck in the cart chocobo. Yeah, don't crunch. Despite the many hardships they had endured, or perhaps because of them, they greeted every new challenge with a smile. Their workshop, their battlefield, their tools, their weapons, they invariably rose to the occasion, delivering ingenious solutions to seemingly insoluble problems. Tempestuous winds they've carved a path, breaching the Dreadworm Sanctum, and where did they put the where they did put him to the sword, yet in the wake of hard fought victory where secrets lay bare and a vision dark and disturbing. The legacy of the fathers bequeathed to their sons and passed down through the generations, old blood enduring in the new, the mark of the original sin. <laughs> Does feel like it was only yesterday. And yet, at the same time, it feels like it has been so long. Alphano is a snotty little lordling, but he's getting better.
But that's my favorite part. A world apart from the opulence of the pillars, they had toiled, shrouded in the haze of the broom. Sentenced to a life of hardship by birth, they dreamed of revolution as children dream of fairies. Then one came and went, and they suddenly found themselves with a seat at the table. An earnest, good-natured people, they had borne witness to the rage of their beloved god's twisted manifestation, and proclaimed it to be false. By the grace of kind travelers were they duly delivered from its wrath, the mad god's death signaling the birth of a new hero. No right message! <laughs> oh, Yumitra, she's the, she's the summoner! Yeah, yeah, she's, uh, you stole his sister. Well, Matt, what brings you here this night? Aww. Spending time with her sister. <laughs> we do know, that's our Yishtola. So, when we rescued Yastola, she told us she could see with the ether now. What she didn't tell us is that she can't see without it. Poor Yastola. Her sister was under no illusions as to the dangers of the life she had chosen. Should the worst come to the worst, Yustola would do what needed to be done. Pay any price, make any sacrifice, and that without hesitation. She was a woman of conviction, deserving of respect and admiration, and no small amount of worry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Slow fix nose. <laughs> I love the goblins' little dance that they do. For the final objective of this quest, you will receive no guidance from the journal or the duty list. Oh. And now, Slowfix bids Uplander fulfill civic duty as citizen of Idleshire with hand lengthening of a great in port. What does that mean? <laughs> in Cave South of Settlement lives Old Crone. I know where that is. Those are powerful magics. We haven't visited her yet, so that makes sense. Master Matoya. <laughs> I'm just here to remember. <laughs> Oh, because the, yeah, the goblin wanted help.
Ah, I wish that were so, Matoya. <laughs> I'll agree with you there, though. She was the sum of everything that had come before. Triumphs, failures, all essential, all indispensable. Had things unfolded differently, so too would she. What use, then, to mourn the woman who never was? There was only this time, this place, this choice. Who's there? He spies something on the ground at the landing's edge. A blue bouquet. A bouquet of fresh Nemea lilies lies at your feet, an offering for the departed. A thousand thousand fires blossom around her as she fell towards the battleship, a crimson star shower amidst the impassive clouds. His hail. Then came the azure light, faint at first, soon blinding, then shattering, casting motes of diamonds to the four winds. Hello, Tiamat. Child of man, chosen of Hydaelyn. No, you were right. What sayest thou? My senses are yet mine own. That's correct. Yeah, I suppose I did. There he is. Yet thou hast since renounced it, hast thou not? Just gonna sit there in jail for eternity. Perhaps there was hope for them. Perhaps this time they would learn and remember. But her part in the tale had ended long ago. Within this monument to hubris would she remain until the end of days beyond redemption.
Be well to you, Matt. The Undying Ones were defiant, disbelieving, even as death embraced them. Then the knights too succumbed, loyal to the last, to a cause long lost. His body growing light, the Archbishop looked upon the arbiter of his fate, and knew not what he saw, and then it was over. Not remained save the eyes, thinking to bear them away from the covetous hands of men. Estinian took the cursed baubles in his own, and was duly bent to their will, if only for a time. At a friend's behest had they embarked upon their journey, and so, after their triumphant homecoming and all the pomp and circumstances, there was but only one way it could end. Yeah. Uh, alright, so we gotta go pay- Oh! Hearts of Fun Emote. Uh. Oh, this is just an NPC walk in here. That's neat. Oh, and they're gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 